In this episode of Repro Roundup, we'll take a look at a hack of Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo that's very well put together and could be thought of as an unofficial sequel to the original. This is Return to Dinosaur Land. In the late 80s and early 90s, the Super Mario Bros. franchise became a video game sensation with three critically acclaimed entries on the Nintendo Entertainment System. After the success of Super Mario Bros. 3, it was hard to imagine a follow-up that could improve upon this masterpiece. In 1990, Super Mario World was released as a launch title on Nintendo's next platform, the Super Nintendo. Regardless of which is the better game, it's safe to say that Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World are both fantastic titles. Five years later, Super Mario World 2 was released in 1995, and while it's an excellent game in its own right, it's not so much a sequel as it is the start of a brand new series. For fans of the original that have longed for a proper sequel, offering the same experience as the original, this is the game you've been waiting for. Super Mario World Return to Dinosaur Land is a hack of Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo. The story takes place after the events of Super Mario World, with Mario and Luigi returning to Dinosaur Land to visit their Yoshi friends. Princess Peach had arrived a few days earlier to help set up a party, but was now nowhere to be found. The brothers set out in search of the princess, knowing that Bowser must be responsible. The character sprites and graphics in this version are exactly the same as the original, maintaining the bright and colorful visuals of the game. The controls are also unchanged, with precise and responsive movements as you run, spin, and fly through each stage. Many familiar power-ups are also available, and Dinosaur Land wouldn't feel right without a variety of Yoshis to assist you on your journey. Although there are no changes in the graphics or gameplay, these features are nearly perfect in the original, and I have no problems with them staying true to form. Where this version differs from the original, however, is in the new worlds and level designs. The game offers 47 brand new levels for you to explore as you search for the missing princess. After you pass through the familiar grasslands of Yoshi's Island, you will notice that each themed world is very different than the way you remembered it. World 2 is called Mushroom Plateau, featuring hilly terrain that is reminiscent of Donut Plains. Next up is Wiggler's Woods, a forest-themed world with wooded areas and trees. World 4, Frozen Valley, is a unique ice-themed world that was not present in the original game. This challenging world is covered in slippery ice, making it difficult to gain traction and control your momentum. Even the blocks are icy, creating some difficult platforming segments for you to overcome. Choco Peninsula is similar to Chocolate Island in the original game, a world filled with mountainous terrain and chocolate waters. Another unique level is called Urchin Ocean, a water-themed world that was not seen in the original. Here you'll encounter underwater segments, swim against resistive currents, and ride across dolphins to reach your goal. After completing the first six worlds, the final area emerges in the center of the map. Bowserland is filled with challenging levels, filled with enemies, fire, and traps. Every level has a distinct feel and never feels repetitive as the game frequently introduces new concepts and enemies. The enemies you encounter throughout the game are again reused from the original Super Mario World, but are presented in new ways with varying level layouts. And although the castle designs are completely redone, the boss fights with the Koopalings and final battle against Bowser are unchanged in this version. Just like the original game, several secrets can be found across Dinosaur Land, including hidden switch palaces to fill in missing boxes throughout the world. These are extremely useful to find and really come in handy during the later stages of the game. Several of the levels also have alternate exits, many of which are required in order to progress through the world. One stage, for example, as you float under the goalpost while riding a cloud to reveal a hidden segment, 
while another has you manipulate coins and activate a P-switch to access a secret area. While some of the secrets may seem a bit obscure, information boxes are placed in strategic locations to give you hints along the way. In general, the difficulty of the game is very well balanced. Some of the later stages present a decent challenge, but are very beatable with a little bit of practice. A nice upgrade in this game incorporates a save feature after every stage, where the original game only allowed you to save after castles and key events. The Star World and Special World from the original game were not included in this one, and I feel it was a missed opportunity to include some additional content with more challenging levels. And while the soundtrack of the original game is excellent, this is another area I think could have been expanded upon with some new tracks or remixed music. As a whole, keeping the foundation of the original game intact works really well here. The changes that were made with the recreated worlds and level layouts are extremely well thought out and a highlight of this game. So if you're a fan of Super Mario World and looking for more of that classic experience, you can't go wrong with Return to Dinosaur Land.